My last house call in the great state of Texas takes me to Longview, where Lara Lever has asked me to give her outdated interior doors a makeover. Hey, Lara. Hi, Ron. How are you? Very good. Thank you very much. Lara has an entire house full of plain Jane doors. Today, though, we're going to tackle the ones in her hallway. So these are the doors? These are the ones. Okay, what were you thinking? Well, I wanted to update them a little bit. They're looking a little 70s, yeah. so I was thinking I like the look of the panel doors and okay. just bring it more, a little more updated looking. All right, so you were thinking maybe applying molding to right. these doors? Okay, right. that's a great idea because uh, we can make these look like panel doors for a fraction of what it would cost to actually replace them. Right. So why don't we start by taking them down, taking them outside. Have you got a screwdriver? Okay. I sure do. I'll go in here and we'll start. After we remove the doors from the hinges, we carry them outside to our work area. This is going to be a great work now this kind of project um, is best done with the door lying flat at a comfortable work height. Our next step is to remove all the hardware, screws, hinges, and door latch. The plan is to apply two rectangles of molding to the face of the door. Simple enough if we choose the right molding and put it in the right place. So this is the molding you picked out. Yes. You like this one? It's the one I like the best. Uh -huh. uh, I think it's a good choice. It's mm -hmm. thick enough to give you the illusion of a recessed panel, which is what we want. Mm -hmm. But I want you to be absolutely sure. So what I'm going to do is we're going to stick this up on the door temporarily. Here, okay. take some tape. Great. Just roll it to the sticky side out, just like this. We attach three pieces of the molding Lara has chosen. Then stand the door upright so she can get a better idea of how it will actually look in place. Yeah, okay. it looks great. I like the way it looks on the door and everything. It looks great. Now we're going to go for placement. All right. And I'm thinking, you kind of like where those were. Right. Uh, maybe something between five and six inches down from the top. Again, okay. you can just lay this Lara on Lara decides here. on five inches. Like five. Okay. So we set a combination square at five inches and draw a line That's across the top of the door. Lara finishes drawing as I start placing strips of wide masking tape along the lines to simulate the molding. It helps to be neat here, so we trim the overlapping ends to create a mitered effect. Now, what we're looking for is proportion and placement of the molding. Mm -hmm. If something looks too high, too low, too narrow, too wide. It looks just right. Now, what looks, about the bottom? It looks just right. You can't tell that that's two inches larger than the top, okay. so the placement's just perfect. Uh, one of the first things we're going to do is take some uh, molding that I've cut slightly oversized, a little bit longer than we actually need. This is the piece for the bottom right here. Mm -hmm. And we're going to cut an angle off one end. This miter box is an inexpensive plastic one, but it has a really nice feature. These cams are pegs, which go in the holes here in the bottom. Hmm. They kind of hold this in place. And secure which, it. Now that we've decided exactly. which molding to use and where it should be placed, it's time to cut some wood. Now we're just going to cut this end off right here. Okay. Lara wants this to be a hands-on project, so she takes over and makes the next few cuts. Perfect. Good. Okay, here's the important part. Now we have to make four of these with miters on both ends that are exactly the same length. One, two, three, and four. Okay. Here's how we're going to do it. Uh, from the pointed end right there, okay. we're going to measure down 24 inches. Now, if you're going to lay this in the miter box, we're going to drop the saw in sort of temporarily here. And what I'd like you to do, Laura, is to line up the saw with that mark right there, okay? okay. Under this end, we're going to install this stop block, and we want the end of the molding to touch this block right here, just like that. Adjustable C-clamps will hold our stop block in place. All we have to do is slip in a piece of molding, insert the pins, and cut away. Pretty much. Good. You're through. Okay. Very nice. And of course, you know, this will go right up here or right down here. And no matter how many of these we cut, using this system right here, they're all going to be exactly the same size. length. Okay? Great. So let's cut the rest of these for the door. Okay. Okay, okay Lara, let's just do a test fit here now. Just land up on the outside edge of the tape. We, okay, it looks pretty good. Pretty good fit, huh? Looks great. Very nice. Very now nice. it's time to do a little light sanding. Lara wants to brighten up her doors by painting them in off-white. The sanding will give the new paint a better grip. If we repaint the door before we attach the molding, we can use a short nap roller and cover the surface very quickly. It's also easier and faster to pre-paint the individual pieces of molding before applying them. 
Okay, well, we've laid out those original marks that we had very, very faintly because now, of course, we're on a painted surface here. And we can begin putting this molding down. Lara and I begin attaching the molding by first applying glue to the back of the pieces and then pressing them firmly onto the face of the door. We do the upper section or top panel first. Next, we insert small brads or headless nails into the end of a tool called a brad pusher. As pressure is applied to the handle, the tiny brad is forced through the molding and into the face of the door, holding the trim work in place until the glue dries. With the upper panel complete, we move on to the bottom one, repeating the gluing and nailing process. It's time now to reinstall the hardware. If the finish wasn't in such good shape, we might think about replacing the hinges and latch set, but that won't be necessary. So what do you think? It looks beautiful. It's exactly the look that I wanted. Isn't it nice? It looks great. Totally it brightens everything. Brightens it, makes the hallway look wider to me even, mm -hmm. and adds a lot of very interesting detail. Boy, this is one of those times when seeing a before picture, then comparing it with the end result, makes quite an impression.